अपना कोर्स गेट स्मार्ट गेट अहे कॉपरेट गवर्नेंस एंड रिस्क मैनेजमेंट The role of board of directors with respect to the best practices in corporate governance. Now, with respect to board of directors, it should essentially comprise of a majority of independent members. Majority, so that these members have enough say. They should be independent of the influence of the management, and these members ideally should have sufficient knowledge about the company and the industry. In case if they don't, uh, some of these members. Uh, could go through training at the time of joining the board so that they have enough sufficient knowledge about the company and about the industry at large the board of directors should look after the interest of the shareholders and the debt holders they should make sure that the company is working towards the uh, maximization of value for the shareholders and the debt holders uh, the bod should uh, make sure that the company is doing things in the highest interest of the stakeholders and that the management uh, is not uh, taking decisions which are in conflict with this large objective so the board of directors should take steps to reduce agency risk so the management should work as agents of the stakeholders and should do everything which is in the best interest of the stakeholders the board of directors should be independent in the true sense and uh, should be independent of the influence of the management and they should look to introduce a risk officer within the board so this uh, the cro could very well be reporting to the management or to the board of directors or there should be a clear definition to whom should they be reporting to but they should the cro should at least have a seat in the board best practices in risk management the board of directors should prioritize economic profit over accounting profit now we all understand the, that economic profit is what brings true value to the business is what is true profit and hence should have precedence over accounting profits so even in terms of decisions when we are looking to hedge ourselves to preserve profits it should be economic profits which should precede over accounting profit uh the board of directors should promote robust risk management process they should set up ethics committee uh, which in turn should make sure that the highest standards are being followed across uh, the company uh they should ensure risk adjusted performance uh, linked compensation system is in place uh which is that your compensation should be linked to performance which is not absolute but is rather uh, risk adjusted that means it takes into account the risks uh, as well which have come in into the system on account of any decision made and on account of any performance goals achieved uh, they should have a risk committee in place and the board of directors should not refrain from asking relevant questions to the management as and when warranted because they need to keep in mind that they are here to uphold the interest of the shareholders now in the context of risk governance the role of the uh, risk director would be to review and analyze the firm's risk management policies risk management reports the risk appetite that means deciding on what risks are to be taken what risks are to be hedged and what would be the implication of the set limits on the business strategy uh it should uh, the risk director should also review uh, the internal control of the firm financial statements and disclosures related party transactions and audit reports the risk director should also look at best corporate governance best practices which are followed in the industry risk management practices which are being followed by the competitors now coming over to audit committee the audit committee should be responsible for the accuracy of the financial statements uh, of the company or of the firm and that they are in compliance with the reporting norms 
It should ensure that systems related to financial reporting, regulatory compliance, internal controls, and risk management are in place. Here, of course, it could seek the cooperation of the internal auditors as well. The audit committee should uh, have uh, adequate knowledge of finance as well as accounting rules, inclusive of GAAP, IFRS, etc., and that it should meet the minimum standards related to legal compliance risk management. Now, coming over to the risk appetite uh, of the firm, it is the ability and the willingness of the firm to accept risk. So it's defining what all risks are to be taken and what all risks are to be done away with are to be hedged uh, against. Risk appetite should set some limits to the firm's business strategy. That's uh, very obvious because once uh, the firm decides that there are certain risks which are to be done away with, it clearly would set breaks and limits to the kind of uh, projects that the firm can take or let's say the kind of risk elements within the project which are to be hedged against. And hence, uh, this needs to be fine-tuned into the firm's business strategy. And uh, it would, of course, set a limit uh, on the ability of the company to exploit business opportunities. Of course, it needs to be seen through the lens of what is the kind of risk that the business is willing to assume. Because with every opportunity comes its own fair share of risk. So hence, uh, the business strategy which is laid out it should be in absolute alignment with the risk appetite that the firm has defined uh, for itself. So there we come to the end of corporate governance and risk management. Apna course. Get smart. Get ahead.